Bradley Mayhew wants to hike the most famous pilgrimage route of Scandinavia. There are several routes known collectively as the Saint Olaf's Ways. Well, Olaf was a, an early Norwegian king, dated from about 10 centuries ago. Essentially, was famous for uniting Norway and bringing Christianity to Norway. After his death, lots of miracles grew up, so he was canonized by the Pope and then became pretty much the, the patron saint of Norway and the biggest saint in the whole of Scandinavia. Bradley is going to spend the next three weeks hiking St. Olaf's Ways. His destination, the city of Trondheim, where King Olaf lies buried. During the Middle Ages, the St. Olaf's Ways was almost as equally important as the St. James Way to Santiago de Compostela. From the fjord, there are also direct paths to Trondheim that cross the sparsely populated Norwegian mountains. But Bradley wants to take the most important of the St. Olaf Ways, a route that was recognized as a European culture route in 2010. The main pilgrimage route of the St. Olaf Ways, Good Brandsdalen Path, begins in Oslo and goes through Lillehammer. From Lillehammer, the path follows the Gudbrandsdalen, Norway's longest valley, all the way to the Dovrefjell Mountains. St. Olaf Ways ends at Nidaros Cathedral in Trondheim. The first couple of days go through the Gudbrandsdalen. Since time immemorial, the main transport corridor between southern and northern Norway. A landmark on the trail is the Ringebu Stave Church. The church, made entirely of wood, was built around 1200. In the 1990s, it was decided that the path should be properly marked. The symbol used is the Red Cross of Olaf, in combination with the Norwegian cultural heritage symbol. Okay, so you can step me out. Oh yes, sure. Just like on St. James yeah, Way, the stages completed on the St. Olaf's Ways sure. can be documented nice in a pilgrim's Great. passport. Name. Thank you very much. I hope the weather stays for me. Yeah? The full network of the St. Olaf Ways is more than 5,000 kilometers long. It includes paths that lead from Denmark and Sweden to Trondheim. Each year, around 10,000 pilgrims walk the routes. There's all kinds of hikers walking the Olaf path. Some people are carrying everything on their back, camping in the woods, and other people have their bags transported for them. They just carry a day pack, go to a nice hotel, hot shower at the end of the day. So there's all kinds of different comfort levels you can do if you want to tackle the trail. Slightly less than 50 kilometers of the pilgrimage path goes across the Dovrefjell Plateau. It'll take Bradley three days to cross the mountain plains. This is the most difficult part of the entire trail. Here, it can snow at any time of the year. Outside of Greenland, the Dovrefjell mountain range is the only place in Europe where there are still any wild musk oxen left. And there are 4,000 wild reindeers now living in the seclusions of the Dovrefjell mountains. For the last legs, the way goes mainly through river valleys. On St. Olaf's Ways, you rarely meet someone coming from the opposite direction. Pilgrimage routes are like one-way streets, and in Norway, they all lead to Trondheim. In the Middle Ages, Trondheim was called Nidaros. The town cathedral still bears the ancient name. The path they took follows the trail of a Viking who, converted to Christianity, 
became king, fell in battle, and is today the most revered saint of Scandinavia. I think there's a real sense of achievement at arriving at Nidaros here. Many of the hikes and treks that I do, the high points are always in the middle, whether it's a high pass or a base camp. The great thing about a pilgrimage is that the, the destination is what it's all about. So to finally get here is a, a great sense of achievement. And you really, you really end on a high note. <laughs>